Hey everyone, I want to introduce you to my friend, Coach Fard, and I'm super excited to chat with him today about, uh, he wrote a book a while back um, called Born CEO, and I, I asked him to come on and share with you guys what it looks like to be uh, the CEO of your life and kind of how that unraveled and some, some steps in there and really encourage you today. So uh, I really hope you enjoy this. I loved the first conversation I had with him on this and I think you'll enjoy it too. So do you want to just uh, share with us uh, maybe a little bit about your background or what is the big idea of your book? Because maybe I think then you'll share about your background or however you want to do it is great. Absolutely. And uh, it's an honor to be on. Um, the, the name of the book is Born to Rule. Um, awaken yeah, the right. born CEO within you, um, and uh, it's it's basically a big part of, of my journey, um, my my own story, and um, uh, it goes a little like this. My when I was 14 years old, my dad gave me a, a motivational speech. It was about eight words, and it was simply, "When you're 18, you're on your own." <laughs> and so. I'm 14 years old, and I and my dad was very serious about it. Like, you better figure out your life <laughs> because in about four years, you're going to be out there. So if you haven't figured it out by then, good luck to you. And so I was motivated. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it was a perfect speech. And so I started thinking about, you know, what did I want my future to look like? You know, what what did I want to do? And I was inspired by entrepreneurs. I was inspired by people who are making a difference in the world. Uh, my dad was listening to lots of audio books and things like Think and Grow Rich and uh, Napoleon Hill works. And I just remember going, man, I wanna do something great with my time, great with my life. Uh, but the problem was I struggled with low self-worth since I was six years old. Um, by the time I was six years old, I didn't even wanna be alive anymore. Mm. I had a, a, all kinds of issues, abandonment issues, I, I made the mistake of basing my self-worth on other people's actions and other people's words. And I don't know how many people can relate to that, but my self-esteem started to erode. I got to the point where I was thinking maybe dying from asthma is not such a bad idea. You know, I can remember one time looking myself in the mirror and hating myself so much that I started punching myself in the face. Oh, like, I, I, I hate you. Six. And so how do, you, how do you get to a point like that, you know? And so uh, uh, it started shifting um, when I started realizing that I was put here for a purpose. Um, I actually had a, a divine encounter when I was younger and I got so inspired and I realized, wait a minute, that's something I was put here to do. I just need to figure out what it is. And so I went from not wanting to be alive to simply wanting to figure out what in the world was I born to do. And it was hard. So anyway, I just started searching. I started figuring out a few things, putting the, the pieces together, if you will. And as the pieces came together and I started to act on my, on my dream, I started to move towards my purpose. My self-esteem started to shift. My self-worth started to shift. My confidence started to shift. Um, I started to see myself in a better light, yeah. um, and, and I call it awakening the born CEO. There was an awakening that was happening. There was a leader inside of me that had been crushed by life, <laughs> and it was starting to awake, awaken again. And so I found some great mentors. I found some great coaches. I found uh, great authors of books and seminars, and I started transforming, I became an entrepreneur. Um, I was able to become financially independent by the age of 22 years old from applying what I've been learning. And that's the key word, applying. And, uh, and, and I realized that my mission in life is to inspire and equip other people to become financially independent and do what they were born to do. Uh, but that requires transformation. And so I started a Born CEO Academy uh, for that purpose. I wrote the book. Born to Rule, which is the first book in the Born CEO series, uh, to help people make that transition into the leaders that they were born to be. Sure, cool, I love that. Um, and so our audience is in the network marketing space, right? So can you, can you talk a little bit about some of the things that helped you to be successful in your business to be able to create this freedom that you're talking about? Absolutely, well, first of all, 
um, kudos to everyone who has figured out that network marketing um, is a key component in today's society. I think it's the smartest, not only one of the smartest businesses, but I believe that network marketing is one of the best incubators for entrepreneurial development. And so I was introduced to network marketing when I was 19 years old, just about to turn 20. A good friend of mine called me up and said, hey, I want you to look at something. Give me your feedback on it. And when I took a look at network marketing for the first time, um, thank God I hadn't been exposed to any of the stigmas out there uh, that people have, like the old school network marketing. But I saw beauty in network marketing. I saw um, I saw people of purpose coming together to lift other people up. I saw people who had gone from from zero to hero in their lives and were sticking around to help other people make that transition. But most importantly, I found the business school that I had been looking for my entire life. You know, I, I wanted to be an entrepreneur since I was 14 years old. I knew it. Um, and I wanted to become financially independent from the time I learned about it. But when I learned about time freedom and that it comes from developing leverage, developing passive residual income, I wanted to do it. Um, but I didn't have the mentors. I started going to seminars when I was uh, 16 years old, free seminars because I could afford them. Right. Um, <laughs> I, I remember, <laughs> best price ever. Yeah, right. uh, I remember when. Uh, the first seminar I really wanted to invest in was $2,000, and I was exactly $2,000 short. <laughs> yeah. And um, I started selling snacks and candy at school in order to pay for the, the uh, seminar. But, but even then, what I found is that the seminars were designed to make money for selling the information, not so much for the success that we were having from applying the information. Yeah. And I saw that was a struggle for a lot of people, whether they applied it or not, the seminars usually generated the income that they were looking for. Well, when I came into network marketing, it was very different. They were actually committed to developing the entrepreneur because it doesn't work unless you, when you're taking people from every walk of life and every background, some people have never been in sales, don't have those skills, don't have the mindset, don't have the habits, never been in business. You have to develop them, and network marketing is built on that personal development, the leadership development, the entrepreneurial development, and it literally changed my life. And so the first thing that helped me um, to succeed, in fact, network marketing, uh, out of all the things I looked at, real estate investing, I, I've developed um, several different streams of residual income that I talk about in my book, or uh, drizzles of residual income, yeah. <laughs> um, sometimes people... Uh, one a stream, but it starts off as a drizzle of income before it becomes a stream that can actually pay some bills. But my first full-time stream of passive income that replaced my job income came from network marketing. Right. And I wasn't rich. I wasn't rich at all, but you don't have to be rich to be free. I was able to replace my full-time income on my job. It freed up my time to pursue my purpose in life. That's cool. And so the first thing that really helped me um, was my mindset about network marketing. So when I was in high school and I would ask, when are we going to learn about um, entrepreneurship? When are we going to learn about financial independence? They all said, you have to go to business school because it was the only answer they knew to give me in formal education. And so I went to business school, ended up going into a lot of debt. Um, I learned a lot of things, but it wasn't really entrepreneurial. What I learned was good for getting a job, it was good for networking, good for lots of different things, but what I wanted to become was an entrepreneur. I wanted to develop myself. And so I was very uh, disappointed with what I found. So I found myself in class, in business school, reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and Think and Grow Rich under my desk, uh, instead of paying attention to what was being taught, because I was on a mission. So when I found network marketing, or more realistic, really, the network marketing found me. Um, I saw it as the business school that I had been dreaming of. I love In that. fact, Robert Kiyosaki wrote a book um, called The Business School. Um, and then he later on came out with one called The Business of the 21st Century. And I totally agree with what he said in there, that network marketing is that business school. And so before, I was going through the school of hard knocks when I was building my candy business to uh, 200 to $300 a day when I was in high school. I had to figure it all out. 
Um, but when I came into network marketing, it put me in an environment where all of my professors were successful entrepreneurs uh, and good mentors and coaches, and they cared. And they had gone through and the ups and downs and struggles that I was going to go through and I was dealing with. So I looked at it as a, if I can, if I can give four or five years to a traditional business school to go out and get a job, why can't I give four to five years to my network marketing school, my entrepreneur school to develop me, help develop me into the entrepreneur that I need to be. So my mindset before was about making money in network marketing or growing my business, it was about becoming, that key word, becoming who I needed to become in order to bring my dream to reality. And if that makes sense. Yeah, well, so, I, love, I love that. I've been talking about the becoming a lot recently. I think um, something I did with a client yesterday, I think you'll get a kick out of, so you know vision boards? Yes. So vision boards, you might put like all the stuff you want up on there. Like I want to go to this place. I want to go to this place. I want to right, go to get this thing. Um, you know, the idea is to chase that. Uh, what I noticed was a disconnect. Uh, and I'll do a future podcast specifically on, on this topic. But I think you'll, you'll enjoy this. Um, we started doing like a vision board for who they want to be. Because for the people that I coach and, and myself and the income levels that they're searching to achieve, I don't think they can be achieved just by chasing a vacation because there's a stop off point, I think probably over 150,000 a year where you really have to figure out who do I need to be to earn that kind of income stable and so we actually added a second board dream board where it's like the dream them um and it's been really cool to see the response behind that um and i'm excited to see what results they see over the next six months or so um as they pursue that as a path to to you know all that other stuff um, and it sounds like that's exactly what you were looking at is not how do I how do I earn X amount of dollars? It's who do I need to be to earn X amount of dollars? Exactly. Um, to, you got you nailed it. I was just uh, teaching a group of network marketers and entrepreneurs on Tuesday uh, Tuesday night, and the exact same thing. I was talking about the power of becoming and putting that on their vision board. Literally, crazy. Uh, creating a vision of image. Yeah, we have, we think, a, great minds think alike, but it's so important uh, to do that because if you don't focus on the becoming, you can have all the skills in the world, you can know how to sell, you can know how to recruit, you can know how to train, but it's who you are. It's who you are that determines who you attract, what impact you make, yeah. what you allow yourself to earn. You know, our self worth determines our net worth. It's very rare that our net worth will rise higher than our self worth. Sure. And if it does, it'll probably be temporary and it'll come back down to however we see ourselves. And as we work on our self worth and who we are, our skills, our mindset, our attitude, our influence, all of a sudden everything else can rise in our lives. And so that was the first thing was a focus on becoming um, that really helped me in the network marketing space. Uh, to grow and replace my full-time income and achieve my dream, which was to free my time so I could do what I was born to do as a mentor and as a coach. Um, another thing that was really um, valuable for me is I, I was really overwhelmed. <laughs> when I came into network marketing, there was so many great, so there were so many great ideas, so many trainings. I was all over the place. You know, sure. the idea of the month, the idea of the week, one of the biggest struggles I see in network marketing is, you know, we, they're the best training in the world, but a struggle with consistent implementation. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's about simplifying. And so one of the best things that helped me was learning how to simplify and condense all the things that I was learning down into what are the most important things. Most, most of us have heard of the Pareto principle or the 80-20 the rule. 
um, which is basically says that 80% of the results that we're seeking will be accomplished by 20% of the focus. So we've, if there's 10 things we need to do in order to be successful, two of them will give us 80% of the results. Right. And so the idea is to focus 80% of our effort into those top two things That's that right. are going to give us 80% of the results that we're looking for. And then the other 20% um, uh, giving it to 20%. But that whole mindset, like how do I prioritize what matters most? What's going to give me the most results? What's going to help me create the most leverage? And figuring some of those things out and putting a system around it really helped me. So I've got a system for everything that not only helped me, but helped me leave a, leave a blueprint behind for people coming after me so they could follow those same step-by-step -step processes. And so um, that's a big thing, learning how to systemize. Um, and this is for any entrepreneur. You know, there's so many people who are in business for themselves um, and they end up having a, a job, uh, owning a job as opposed to owning a business. Sure. And there's no freedom there. And so what I found is that when we put three things in place, um, number one, we put the right systems in place for uh, the right systems in place. Um, so that, and then number two, put the right team in place. <laughs> we need those three things. We need the right systems. We need the right team to run the system. And then we need the right leaders to lead the team to run the system. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I didn't know that when I first got started. You know, if you don't know that, that you want to create that, if you don't know what the jigsaw puzzle is supposed to look like at the end of building this puzzle, you can spend months or years putting forth great energy, great effort. You can be a good person. You can be doing uh, the things you're hearing people talk about, but it's important to have a vision of what it's supposed to look like when it's finished so that all your energy and effort is actually creating that puzzle and not uh, not going all over the place. So there were, there were months and months and even years in my business where I didn't even know what I was building. You know, right. is it about selling the product only? I was selling the product and that was great, but I still wasn't building the business. I was recruiting people, but I didn't have a structure to put them into. I didn't know what the end picture was supposed to look like. So I was putting forth all this effort and I wasn't getting the return until I got a clear picture. Um, Stephen Covey says, begin with the end in mind. I could see what it was supposed to look like and then I could put those three components in place. Okay, so I'm supposed to put systems in place that my team can run that helps them become successful. And I need to find the team members to run the system and then I need to put leaders in place to inspire and equip the team to operate the system and that's what freedom looks like. And so it really helped to learn those three components and then to start putting those pieces in place and helping other people do the same thing. Well, I think you just blew my mind because I think if I look back on even my entrepreneurial journey, I understood those three concepts, did them backwards though. And mm. I think a lot of our clients do the same so when I go and coach on recruiting, people will always say, I need to find a committed builder. Once I find a committed builder, everything will be fine. And I try to tell them, well, hold on. If you did find a builder, what would you do with them? And we find that this concept of what if they say yes, bottleneck is a big problem. And so then they find the committed builder, but then they, the, the committed builder leaves or they don't even have a farm team of which to farm the committed builder from, and I noticed even in my, my thought when I even I started my company was if I, just, if I just find the best people, it'll be fine. I started leaders that would create the team, that would create the systems. And it didn't work out very well for me. <laughs> or my leaders, sadly, right? And I have a lot of regret over that. Um, and I think what you just said was so brilliant about starting with the systems, then recruiting the team, and then rising, I think in network marketing specifically, right, you raise up leaders. You might pull them out and bring them in, but in most instances, you're gonna 
raise them up. Am I understanding that correctly? But is that order is critical? Absolutely. You're just kind of screwed all the time. And it's important, and this is why it's so important that we take inventory of our own gifts and our own strengths that we have and um and connect and strategize with people who have the gifts we don't have mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the reasons i love what you do in developing uh people in the area of sales and recruiting and leadership etc um a lot of people don't have that skill or even if they have the skill they're not effective at teaching and coaching others through that yeah. so it's important to have a resource that even if we're building the business and we either don't have the time or the skill set to do that or the, the, the passion to do that, sure. we have a resource to plug them into for that. Exactly. And for me, um, because of my personality type, um, if anybody's uh, familiar with the Myers-Briggs, I'm an INTP. And so my mind, I have a system mindset. Um, we're the people that can learn anything. And the way our minds work, we can simplify it down into a simple step-by-step -step framework that's practical and easy for anybody to implement and apply. And so because that's one of my strengths, I'm the person on the team who takes all the information, all the ideas, all the vision, systemizes it, puts it in the step-by-step, -step, ABC, one, two, three. Yeah. Like it, anything somebody needs to learn, I've got an ABC, one, two, three system for it. And uh, for those who need some resources, I have a free resource library as well that's generic um, or, um, that uh, uh, can help out with some of the systems. but you know, whether it's three-way calling, whether it's what to say, whether it's um, the recruiting process, the event building process, it's important to give people practical steps, you know, A, B, C, one, two, three, on how to implement things so they can develop habits and routines, consistent habits and routines that create consistent income. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing that was really helpful for me. Um, a lot of people, when they come in, they're looking for results right away. And I learned a long time ago, um, and the, the, my, my language for this is that res, with habits put results on autopilot. Yeah. Habits put results on autopilot. So before I looked for the results, I wasn't good at prospecting, for example. I didn't like talking to people. I'm actually naturally an introvert. I used to say I'll never do any interviews like this or oh, stand really? up in front of a room and speak. <laughs> I used to say that. Um, because of, that's where I saw myself, where I couldn't see myself there. And, uh, but what I knew I would need to overcome that in order to be successful. And so I said, you know what? I heard Jim Rohn say something one day. And if you haven't listened to Jim Rohn, you've got to. One of the best days of my life was the day I spent with the great Jim Rohn. And he said, you know, if you talk to two or three people a day, by the end of the year, that's a thousand people. That's a thousand people. And he went on to say, it's almost impossible to talk to a thousand people and not have something spectacular happen. Right. And I went, well, you're so right. You know, and so I don't have to focus on how many people did I get signed up or how many people joined. If I can get into the habit of talking to two or three people a day, prospecting two or three people a day, inviting two or three people a day, that means every year I'll automatically have a thousand people going through my pipeline. So instead of focusing on the result, I'm gonna focus on the habits, yeah. the routine. And, uh, and I didn't care how good I was at first, I just started doing it and doing it and doing it until it became a habit and uh, it put the results on autopilot. I started earning a consistent income from my consistent habits. And then I started teaching others and coaching others on how they can develop the same consistent uh, mm -hmm. habit to give them consistent income. And that's when my business started to grow and oh, replace my full-time income. I love that. That's so great. Wow. I was not expecting all of that brilliance. Um, because I was going to, the next thing I had written down uh, was kind of more along the story part and the book part. But I just want to say thank you so much for what you just shared. I thought that was, I mean, it was amazing. Awesome. Um, can you talk a little bit about shifting when we talked before the podcast, you asked me what I wanted to get out of this. And I think that um, a lot of folks, you know, they join network marketing, but they're still kind of paper bags in the wind, right? Everything's kind of knocking them around. Um, 
And in the book, you know, what I, you know, when you think about the born to rule concept, I mean, you kind of talk about some decisions that need to happen and kind of how to shift and take control of your own life. And in my mind, I interpreted that as the reader, like, okay, so this is how to not be a paper bag blowing in the wind. And I think that, I think that would be really, really helpful um, for our audience to make some shifts. They may not go from paper bag in the wind to like completely, like, you know, none of us are perfect, but you feel like they mastered it. But what, what kind of tips or encouragement would you have for people that just want to get a little bit more control in their life? Well, well, first of all, I think that um, the, the, one of the first things I would say is never confuse your plan with your purpose. Never confuse your plan with your purpose. When we confuse the plan for the purpose, we get perplexed. <laughs> and here's what I mean by that. Sometimes the reason why we're wandering, which you described as the paper bag effect, I I describe it as the wandering phase of life where we're kind of wandering without clear direction or purpose or focus, and we can find ourselves all over the place. And one of the things I've seen in my journey and with others uh, in network marketing and entrepreneurship in general, uh, and even outside of it, um, we think that maybe sometimes that our, we, we confuse our plan, which could be the vehicle that we're working, and sometimes we confuse the vehicle, which is part of the plan, for the purpose itself. And I've seen a lot of people that are trying to find passion, they're trying to find focus, they're trying to find what they need inside to really turn it on. Like, I know what to do, but why am I not doing it yet? You know, I know what's possible. I see all these people succeeding, but when is it going to be my turn? Like, what is it going to take for me to step up and become that leader I know I was born to be? And one of the big parts of what, what the book is about is discovering your own purpose and allowing your, your purpose in life to be the fuel to work the plan. So some people, the mission of their network marketing business is their life purpose. They, the, the mission of the company, the mission with the product, the service that they offer, for some people, it aligns perfectly with their purpose in life, their passion. But for most people I've found, even if they're passionate about the mission, passionate about the product, they have a greater purpose in life and the network marketing business is a vehicle. It's a part of the plan get to get them free, to get them free so they can fulfill the purpose. So they can do what they want to do with, for their family. So they can live the dream. And so uh, when I was talking to a group of networkers the other night, I, I shared with them three words, dream, commit, and launch. You've got to dream, you've got to commit, and you've got to launch. You've got to dream big, commit big, and launch big. And so part of it is really starting to dream again starting to dream again. Start thinking about what is your real purpose in life. My favorite question to ask and I ask it in the book, is imagine if you had complete time and financial freedom. I ask this to everybody. Um, if I'm sitting next to you on a plane, I'm probably going to ask you this question. You know, if you had complete time and financial freedom, you didn't have to worry about money anymore. You don't have to work anymore for money. Your time is free. That 40, 50, 60 hours a week you used to work for money is now free to live your life. If you could only do one thing to make a positive impact in this world, using your gift, if you can only do one thing for the rest of your life to impact the world, what would that one thing be? And it's amazing the answers that come out. When I have time and I'm speaking to an audience, if I'm invited to come speak, uh, it's my favorite question to ask, and I like to go around the room and have people answer. And when you hear the answers that come out and the passion and you see in people's eyes the what's in their heart to do in this world, you can't help but to go, oh my gosh, what an amazing world this would be if everybody actually did what they just said. But why aren't they doing what they just said? What are they spending their time doing instead? Most people are spending their time working to pay the bills. 
their provision. And so that's why I say, understand that my job is not my purpose. My life, my, when I was working a job, I had to realize this job is not my purpose. It's just a part of the plan. Even in my beautiful network marketing business, where I love the, the mission, I love the product, I love what we're about, I'm passionate about it, but I have a greater purpose. The founder, that was the founder's purpose, but for some of us, we have a greater purpose in our network marketing business or traditional business or, or job is a part of that plan. And so I, my encouragement to everybody is to really tap into your gift, your passion, your purpose in life. And that's what we believe at Born CEO, that we all have a, a gift we were born to serve. We all have a problem we were born to solve in this world. And, and we, all have, we all have the right to be free. Freedom is our birthright, but it must be claimed. And so for those who may find yourself um, wandering or stuck or kind of floating around or in and out or trying to tap into that purpose, I mean, trying to tap into what you need to grow, my advice is to get clear on what your purpose is, your purpose. What, what is the domain that you were born to rule? What is that vision for your life? What is your life, not only your dream lifestyle, get clear on what this dream lifestyle is that you want to provide for yourself and your family when, they, when you're in a position where you don't have to worry about time or money, but also get clear on what you would do to make a positive impact on this world. And what are your gifts? What, what do you want to be known for in your life? And allow that to fuel you, allow that to become your brand, your personal brand. And then that's, Brand, your, your mission is why you're building your network marketing business. And when that fuel comes in, your purpose will provide the passion to work your plan and see it through. Awesome. I was just looking for my extra mic to see where it is so I could drop it for you. So, <laughs> I usually have one sitting here. It's usually right here. You can use a pen. <laughs> well, and now I'm just disturbed on where where my <laughs> mic dropping mic is. It has a specific job, and it's for situations like that. Um, that was so good. Thank you so much. Uh, is there anything else, just as we wrap up here? I know that you mentioned you had uh, a free resource for our audience if they want to take advantage of it. Is there any just last thoughts or how they can connect with you? Absolutely. Um, for anybody that's wondering or need some help implementing, figuring out the purpose. That's the book, Born to Rule. It's called Born to Rule, Coach Far Bell. Uh, it's available on Amazon. And I go over seven steps to claiming your freedom and living your purpose. I talk about the value of network marketing in there as well. Great for prospects, great for team members, uh, great for everybody. And for those who uh, wanna check out resources or find out when I have new free resources uh, available, you can go to my website, bornceo.com slash networkers with an S at the end, bornceo.com, so B-O-R-N-C-E-O.com forward slash networkers. And uh, there's a free uh, resource library, and I'll let you know when anything new comes out uh, to support the network marketing family. Awesome. I love that. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I really, really appreciate it. So say, say bye to everyone for now. And thanks for having me. Awesome. Thank you.